Let's talk about the immediate bioenergetic energy sources. All right, so um, the first one, and it's not so much a pathway, but it more of just a description of something that exists, and that is the stored ATP that's just sitting there waiting to be used in our muscles and various cells of the body. All right, so we always have a little bit of ATP sitting there ready to be used. Um, so it's a very small amount. Um, it's stored within the cytosol of the cells. Um, so when we start to contract muscle, this is going to be the first ATP that we use. Again, just the stored ATP that was produced at a previous point in time. A typical person has about enough stored ATP in order to um, sustain intense exercise for somewhere between one and three seconds. Um, and when we do this, when we actually anytime when we use ATP, regardless of the source, whether it's stored ATP or it comes from a some other bioenergetic um, pathway that we're going to be talking about, um, the process of using the ATP is the same. It's always going to be ATP hydrolysis. ATP hydrolysis is just the term given to the process of breaking down ATP in order to release its energy. And so we can see this simple diagram here where we have the ATP molecule. This needs to be done in the presence of water. So we have a water molecule. So these two together um, using the ATPase enzyme is going to yield ADP, the inorganic phosphate, the energy that's liberated from pulling off that uh, that phosphate molecule, and there's also going to be a hydrogen ion, or basically an acid uh, molecule that's going to come from this. And this is actually going to be pretty important um, when we talk about um, the acidification that happens in the muscles and in the blood during intense anaerobic types of, types of exercise. Uh, so we're not going to get into that in this video, um, but I'll try to put a link down in the description um, to that video once that video has been uh, created. Once we've used up most of our uh, stored ATP, we then need to start creating new ATP. And this is the first place where we really get into bioenergetics, so the, the process of creating energy. Um, so phosphocreatine is that first energy system that we're going to use, um, especially with high intensity exercise. And it is an immediate energy system because it's so, so quick that our bodies um, aren't going to be able to sense a difference. We're not going to slow down. We're not going to fatigue going from stored ATP usage to creating phosphocreatine, creating ATP through phosphocreatine. And again, so it's an immediate energy system used to make new ATP um, from ADP, so broken down um, ATP molecules. This is going to happen in the cytosol of the cell. Does not require oxygen, so this is completely anaerobic. Our phosphocreatine stores are going to be able to um, fuel intense exercise for about from the three second time point to about 15 seconds. So before three seconds, we're still using the stored ATP molecules, um, but starting around you know one to three seconds, somewhere in there, once we start blowing through some of that stored ATP. That's when the phosphocreatine takes over and it's going to be able to, to fuel our exercise uh, as a primary energy source up to about 15 seconds. At that point in time, we have to go away from the immediate energy sources and go start going towards fast energy sources like glycolysis. Briefly looking at the chemical reaction here, we have our phosphocreatine molecule, we have an adenosine diphosphate molecule, both of those need to be present because we're going to be basically taking a phosphate off of the phosphocreatine, adding it to the ADP, making it ATP. And to do that, we need the enzyme creatine kinase. Um, and again, we get the ATP and then the creatine molecule without its phosphate attached because it's been moved over to the ATP molecule. And this is the simple um, a simple diagram of the phosphocreatine system. So once we blow through our stored ATP and our phosphocreatine stores, the next energy pathway is going to be glycolysis, a very fast pathway that uses carbohydrate. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to the video where I'll be covering that.